Here's my personal format to building a deck. Each of these eight slots is going to be represented by a role that a card should play and what type of card that should be in its spot. In the first slot will be our win condition. A win condition is any card that acts as a leader in taking your opponent's towers. Ask yourself, would you be able to confidently take your opponent's tower if this card was your sole win condition? To simplify things in this topic, we could split all troops in the game into two categories, win conditions and supports. We will be using the term support card in a different way in a later topic in this video. To give you a better idea of identifying win conditions, I will give you some examples. A balloon is a win condition, while a knight is not. A knight can support your balloon, but is not a win condition by itself. Now instead of a knight and balloon combo, imagine a giant and balloon combo. Both of these cards are win conditions because the giant has the power to take towers mainly on his own. You can also spot a win condition if a deck is centered around it. For example, many Lava Hound decks also carry balloons, minions, arrows, and other cards that will support the hound. Now you may ask, but what about my card? You may call it a support card, but it's helped me take towers many times. Well, ask yourself this question, was your card used in combination with something else? Did your opponent lack the counters to it? Will your card have a deck that centers around it? Here's an example. See this deck? This deck would be very hard to use because there's no card that acts as the driving force to take your opponent's towers. But what about bait decks? Well, it may not look like it, but even those kinds of decks have some sort of win condition, like the Goblin Barrel or more recently, the Prince. There are some exceptions to support cards, however, like the Magic Archer, Dark Goblin, or Princess. While they do have a good impact on offense, you still want to have a card that was born to take towers, not to be a support. I will talk about these hybrids later in the video. In the next slot, you should have a cheap spell. This should be easy to find since there are very few amount of them in the game. You should pick the spell that will best support your win condition. For example, if I'm running a deck with a tank as my win condition, then I will want to use Zap as my cheap spell to reset Inferno Towers or Dragons. But if I'm using a deck without a tank or flying win condition, then I could use something like the Log or Barbarian Barrel. In the next slot, you should have a heavy spell. Essentially, you'd want to do the same thing as you do with picking your cheap spell. For example, lightning would best suit my royal giant because I want to clear away buildings and supports, and I want to reset inferno towers and dragons. However, in a minor deck, poison would be my better option because I'll be worrying about more cheap swarms than buildings affecting my miner. For the next slot, you'll need a mini tank. Mini tanks are units with a solid amount of health, but don't have a boatload of health either. Some examples would be the knight, ice golem, valkyrie, dark prince, and many more. Mini tanks are mainly used to block off attacks and absorb damage. In some instances, they can be used for dragging units to the center of your side of the arena. They can also help protect your win condition on offense as well. In the next slot, you'll need a swarm card. Swarm cards include multiple weaker units bunched up in a group. You'll need these cards mainly as a defensive distraction or to take out troops defensively in general. With their very large numbers and mostly cheap cost, you can use them very often to distract single targeting units such as elite barbarians, princes, pekkas, giant skeletons, and many more. You may ask, but what about royal hogs and royal recruits? They both come in numbers and royal recruits are expensive. Well, for Royal Hogs, they're actually a win condition due to their ability to move fast and target buildings. Also, Royal Hogs wouldn't be great as a swarm card because they can't attack troops. These hogs were born to take towers. As for the Royal Recruits, while they are expensive, they would be a great swarm card to use if the rest of your deck is less expensive or if you have an Elixir Collector. In the next slot, we need a Tank Buster. Now, I know the name is a bit confusing, so let me clarify. Tank Busters are units that deal a lot of damage and are mainly meant to be used on defense. You can use them to take out tanks and most win conditions as well. They're not just for tanks, despite the name. You may ask, does my win condition have to be a troop? Why not use a building in that same deck slot? Well, while buildings are good at pulling building targeting troops, there will be some scenarios where buildings won't be useful against some win conditions, like the miner. Also, unlike tank busters, buildings don't really dish out a high amount of damage. While something like the Inferno Tower can, it can be unreliable as it gets zapped, countered, and then sits on your side of the map waiting to expire. Tank busters can be used on almost all win conditions or threats and can counter push after killing their target. In the next slot, we'll need a support card. Support cards are simply helper cards that can be used flexibly on offense or defense, but in this deck slot, 
They need to be a ranged unit that targets ground and air. Support cards can also come in the form of air swarm cards, and some support cards can be helpful in many offensive situations as well. And finally, the last deck slot is what I would like to call the wild card. This final slot can be used to put in just about anything. A miscellaneous spell, a building, an elixir collector, cards that don't exactly fit into other categories, and even a secondary roll card, such as a second win condition, second cheap spell, second swarm card, and etc. If your deck is lacking at least two anti-air cards, you can use this slot to insert another air targeting unit. If you're going to be inserting another win condition in that slot, avoid having that win condition be the same cost as your original win condition, if your original win condition costs six elixir or more. But that's just a recommendation to keep your elixir average healthy. What I find great about building my own deck is having the freedom to use my own cards and having the ability to use the cards I love the most and the cards that I'm the best at playing. For example, in just about all the decks I build, I like to keep the Magic Archer as my support card and the Hunter as my tank buster. I really hope that this helps you prevail in the arena and I will be there to assist you in the next video. Take care everyone.